What is up, Honors Geometry? Welcome to remote lesson number two on data analysis. Yesterday, we tackled some uh, measurements of central tendency and spread. Today, we're going to look at ratios, proportions, and percentages. Um, a lot of this should be very familiar to you because we hit ratios and proportions uh, with great vigor just last fall when we were studying our chapter on geometric similarity because remember when two geometric figures are similar their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding sides are in proportion you remember that so we did a ton of uh, solving proportions a lot of this should seem familiar. However, the types of questions that you're going to be using are going to be far less geometric. And so that part um, will take some time getting used to reading the problems and setting up the correct uh, equations, the correct proportions. Um, just a quick recap on some definitions. Uh, what is the definition of a ratio? It is simply a comparison between two values. And this says here two quantities. Uh, the example they give are uh, three boys to every two girls in a class. So the ratio would be three to two, right? Which could be written as three colon two. Or like we usually use it in mathematics because we're solving uh, problems with them, three over two. And that's the way that we will probably uh, move forward. Now, what is a proportion then? It's simply an equation which tells us that two ratios are equal. This is a, a true proportion. We didn't have to solve anything. It's just telling us two equivalent fractions are the same. But a lot of times we'll have some unknowns in there. And hopefully you remember how to solve proportions. Cross multiply. It was called uh, the, uh, what was it? It was a... Uh, I think it was proportion rule number one. And it was the, uh, the product of the means it was equal to the product of the extremes, where three and four would be the extremes. Two and six would be the means. And when you multiply them, you have to get the same product. And sure enough, uh, three times four is 12, and two times six is 12. So a little uh, review of some stuff we talked about in the fall. Here's an example. Family wants to buy a large high definition television set for the room. Um, the television sets come in a width to height ratio for high def, right? Of 1.78 to one high def. <laughs> it's probably not really even that uh, special anymore, is it? Um, now, they only have a height clearance of three feet where they want to put this uh, TV. What are we going to do? Um, I think we just need to set up a proportion. Here's a, here would be my advice um, as far as, uh, you know, uh, setting it up. The, the first ratio really is up to you. You set it up however you want. Uh, 1.78 is to 1. But when you set up that second one, you've got to be really careful. Um, this was a width to height ratio. It told us that right here. And so I need to know what those are because uh, three feet is a height. And so the three has to go on the bottom. If you accidentally put the three on the top, you would be very, very sad, right? But we didn't put it on the top. We put it on on the, the bottom where it should have been. Now we can just cross multiply and solve this. And I bet that's what they did here. Let's find out. Oh, look at that, they did. The width would be about 5.3 feet. Cross multiply, easy equation to solve, right? Right. All right, uh, example two. The directions on a box of pancake mix call for one and one third cup of mix for every one cup of water. And that makes two servings. If we want to serve five people, how many cups of pancake mix do we need? Um, boy, full disclosure, uh, here's what I would probably do with this one, especially on a 
PSAT where I was trying to move quickly, I would say, you know what, five is two and a half times bigger than two. You could leave it as five halves or you could write it as 2.5, right? So I'm gonna need two and a half times more pancake mix. Now, we do see a lot of mixed fractions in the kitchen, right? And baking and, and you know, making recipes and that kind of stuff. Boy, it's about the only place you really see them anymore. Uh, mixed fractions are really hard to work with. I can't multiply by one and one third or add one and one third until I convert it to a full fraction. But if I take um, four thirds and multiply it by either five halves or 2.5, I'm gonna get my answer very quickly. Um, if I said 2.5, I would get 10 thirds, I believe. If I said uh, five over two, I would get 20 over six or 10 thirds. And um, you know, that's, uh, that's probably the way I would set it up. Um, let's see uh, what they did. I bet they set up a proportion since that's what we're practicing here. And sure enough, they did. Um, they did not uh, reduce this to four thirds before cross multiplying. So I'm not sure how they knew that five times one and a third was gonna be 20 thirds. I think they skipped a step there. Um, remember, this is easily the type of question you probably would see on the non-calculator part of the uh, PSAT. Um, there's a uh, test three is non-calculator, test four is calculator. And this is probably a non-calculator problem. So don't think you can just put one and one third into your calculator. You're gonna have to remember how to deal with, uh, with fractions. But um, in this case, uh, 10 thirds or 26 or three and one third, however you want to write it, is indeed the final answer. Um, example three, if the ratio of A to B is three to four and the ratio of C to B is nine to 10, what is the ratio of A to C? This is the kind of, of a problem just by reading through it will confuse people so much they'll just end up guessing and moving on. And I highly encourage you to do that if you really have no idea. Don't, don't stare at a problem for five minutes that you're never gonna understand um, and waste the possibility of getting other questions correct. But uh, here's a couple of different ways of solving this. Um, I'm gonna give you the way uh, that kind of came with this, uh, this, these notes, which I think is a very sneaky way, a very uh, clever way, okay? Um, they said that if A over B is 3 fourths and C over B is 9 tenths, if I inverted or took the reciprocal of C over B and made it B over C, it would have to be uh, 10 ninths. This is actually another one of your um, proportion properties that you learned is if you have a true proportion, then the reciprocal of the two ratios would create a new true proportion. Now, why is this helpful? Because now if I multiply um, A over B, right? A over B here, by not C over B, but B over C right here, right? What is gonna happen that is a wonderful thing? Well, these Bs are gonna go away. And so you just get your answer. A over C is what they asked for. A over C is what I get. You could do three times 10 is 30, over four times nine is 36, and reduce that to five, six, or you could do a little uh, algebraic here, uh, which would include doing, let's see here, a three to cancel with a nine, they give me a three. Four has two twos, 10 has five twos, and there you go, five over two times three is six, that's another uh, way you could cancel that out. Definitely want to review working with fractions. Um, you'll have to do quite a bit of it on the PSAT. Now, here's a different way that isn't quite as sneaky, but it's probably uh, um, something that you would think of uh, more um, more neatly without, you know, I mean, this is kind of a sneaky thing. It's very clever, but I don't know how most people would think about it during the middle of a test. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take A over B is 3 fourths. So I'm going to take C over B is um, this is nine tenths. And I, what I notice is that both of these have the same denominator. And so I'm gonna say, huh, what if I could get a common denominator? What if uh, I could find the number that four and 10 both go into the least common multiple, like say 20. So to get to 20, I'd have to do times five, right? 
So times three times five, I'd have to do times two. So do nine times two. So now um, I see that with a common denominator, if B is 20, A and C would have to match up as 15 over 18. Um, there's no other way around it. And uh, that once again reduces to five six. I think it's a little quicker and a little less sneaky. Um, just my two cents worth there. All right, percentages, something we didn't deal too much with uh, in the fall, but definitely dealt with an algebra one. Um, a percentage is just a special ratio where your denominator is 100 out of 100. You know, we, we break things down into uh, hundreds. And so, for example, 5% would be 5 out of 100, 50% would be 50 out of 100. The, the important thing to remember is that there's always a two decimal place slide when you go from a percentage to a decimal which is what you would need to do, right, if we were going to use it on our calculator. Um, it's a common mistake. You know, a lot of times people will say 8% is 0.8, which is really 80%. So don't forget the two decimal uh, slide. A couple quick examples. Uh, no, example four, really obvious. Five is what percent of 25? Well, five out of 25 is one fifth or 0.2. And 0.2 is 20%. Now, you could have set up a proportion 5 is to 25 as what is to 100 since we know that percentages are based out of 100. Um, when you cross multiply this, you get 25x equals 500. And, uh, when you divide by 25, and you are right back to the you know, same thing, 20. But um, that's just, a, just another way of doing it. Much, probably much quicker to do it the first way here. Now. Um, Here's a slightly more, I'd say, confusing problem just because of the way it's worded. 20% of what number is 5? So first of all, you got to think, is 5 the, the numerator or the denominator? Well, 20% of what number, so the, the denominator would be the what number is 5. So 5 is the numerator. Now, the quick way of doing this is just to, to say, well, 0.2 of what is 5, right? Just set up a quick equation. 0.2 times x is 5. Um, but you could also do the proportion method where you did 5 out of what is equal to 20 out of 100, where 20 is the percent, and um, you get 25. It's kind of just the inverse of the problem above, but you can see that when you're working it uh, backwards, it can be a little more confusing. Um, I think what I would probably do is just say 5 out of what 20%, 5 out of what is 20%. Um, now you would have to multiply the x off the bottom and then divide by the 0 0.2, but you would get the same exact answer of 25. Um, and it, I think it's a little more straightforward to uh, set it up that way. Um, percentage change is exactly what it sounds like. The change uh, between an original amount and a new amount uh, broken down into a ratio that describes how, what percentage that change is. Um, so really, we, we need to know the original amount. That becomes the denominator. Difference, whether it's a decrease or an increase, okay, is going to become the numerator. And then because we want it to be a, a percentage change, we'll multiply it by 100. Uh, example 6 is a very straightforward example. The price of chocolate candy increases from $2 a pound to $2.50 per pound. What is the percentage increase? Well, obviously it went up 50 cents, so it is an increase. Um, but the amount that went up was 50 cents. Now, the, the most common mistake here is people will not remember what the denominator should be. Is it the new cost? Is it the old cost? It's always the old cost. That's what you got to remember. So 50 out of $2. Well, 50 cents goes into two bucks, I believe, four times. So one fourth is about 25%. And if we set it up, that's exactly what we would find. Remember, you can pause these any time you want if you want to look at the math for just a little bit longer. Example seven um, Eliza works a 40 hour week. Occasionally, she'll work on the weekends on Sunday and is paid a double time, uh, which is very common uh, for hourly workers, great deal, never turned down overtime. And she gets paid, paid twice her regular working salary. 
So if she uh, works four hours on a Sunday, what percentage are her wages for that week increased? What is the percentage increase? Um, here's a way of doing it. Um, they, they don't really explain it. They just throw the numbers in. So you may be thinking, where do 80 and 400 come from? Well, I think what they did is they just made a, a real simple calculation. Eh, she's going to make $10 an hour. So for uh, 40 hours times $10, that would be $400 um, for the week. But the four hours she works on Sunday, remember she's getting double time. So she's not making $10, she's making $20. Four times 20 is 80. That's where the 80 and the 400 come from. They just made up numbers. This is actually a really good strategy for PSAT and SAT questions where they're giving you a, a situation and you're not sure how to tackle it as far as solving the variables, um, just make up a number. Make up a simple value to plug in and uh, oftentimes it'll get you to the answer. Um, anyway, as we can see, 80 out of uh, 400 is about 20%. Now, here is a way that you could do it in a more general sense, okay? Let's say we don't know how much she makes per hour, but 40x would be how much she makes in a week, but not on Sunday. On Sunday, she makes two times her normal salary, double x. So four times two x, right, becomes eight x. So her total salary for the week, for this week with the overtime is 48x. And the difference between 40 and 48 is eight, but don't do eight x over 48 x. Remember, it's over the original amount. And it turns out that 8x over 40x, once the x is canceled, you get the exact same answer. So there's a more uh, general way of doing it without creating um, you know, known values. But uh, the way that they did it, um, I think is absolutely fine. Uh, number eight, example eight. The merchant is selling a new line of watches. He prices the watches at $120, but then says, I'm going to give it a 10% a sale. Um, during the sale, he ended up making 20% um, profit on these watches. So what was the original price he paid? This is a pretty tricky problem if you try to do it all at once. You really have to break it into parts. The first part I would do is say, all right, um, if he's uh, for say, saving 10% off of this uh, 120 bucks, uh, how much is the new sale price going to be? Now, there's two ways of doing this. You can multiply 10% by 120, which of course would just be $12, and then subtract it. Or if you want it straight out, 10% um, off means we're paying 90% of the price. So 90.9 .9 times 120 whoop, 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 is $108. So this is how much we're selling, or he's selling these watches for. But guess what? He's still making 20% profit, okay? That's how much things get marked up in the retail world. Um, so how much was the wholesale cost? Huh. Well, here's what we're going to do. We are going to whatever that wholesale cost was times 100% plus the 20. So the 100% is what he paid for it, plus he's making 20% on that is equal to the 108. So 120% of what he paid is $108. And 120% uh, would be 1.2. And when we divide 108 by 1.2, we get 90. So he was actually selling these, uh, bought these watches for 90 bucks. He was going to make um, 120 on them. So 30 out of 90, he would have been marking them up 33%. But he ends up um, with the sale price getting 20% profit. Um, example nine to make a basketball team. Selena has to take at least two free throws and successfully make uh, at least 20 free throws, sorry, and it's success to successfully make 60% of her shots. So far, Selena has taken 15 shots and has been successful four times. What is the minimum number of shots that she needs to take before she can qualify for the team? Um, she's not off to a good start. Uh, four out of 15, right, is less than 5 out of 15. So she's under 33% right now. Um, so she's going to have to make up some shots. Now, I think she's going to have to take more than the minimum 20 shots. 
Because think about it, she's already taken 15. So if she makes five out of five more, that'll only get her up to nine out of 20, which is uh, 45%. So she's still got a ways to go. So let's, uh, we're gonna need a variable here. Let's break it down and say she needs to take X more shots uh, or make X more shots. So um, X plus four will be the total number of shots she makes. And because we're going for the minimum number she's gonna make, she's gotta make them all. So X plus 15 will be the total number of shots and, and X plus four has to be 60% of X plus 15. So once again, let's break it down. Shots she makes, the set shot she's gonna take, 60% of the shot she's gonna take has to be at least the shot she makes, okay? And after you set it up, that's the hard part. The hard part is setting this equation up. After you set it up, little distribution, um, and we're in good shape. You distribute the 0.6, and it's an algebra one equation, right? It's subtract four, divide by 0.4. She needs to, to make at least 12.5 um, shots uh, from this point. Now, uh, you can't make a half a shot in basketball, so we're gonna have to say 13. So think about this. She's gonna have to make her next 13 shots in a row if she's gonna get up to that 60% um, goal as quickly as she can. Um, the fact that she's only made four so far doesn't give me great confidence she's going to get there very soon. Hopefully she goes on a little hot streak so that she can make the team. That's a, that's a hardcore requirement, um, especially considering that there's a lot of NBA players who can't even make half their shots. But don't get me going on, uh, millionaires. Um, that's uh, the examples for today. Um, the next, I think, two pages, maybe three pages, are on ratios and proportions in that data packet. Um, I think we're talking about, so page one was notes. The next four pages were probably did last night, so five. So it's probably pages six and seven, or six, seven, and eight are these ratios and proportion problems. Um, do me a favor. Um, sometime tomorrow night, maybe by six o'clock, for those of you who have, who have completed the assignment by then, um, why don't you either post on the classroom or shoot me an email um, which problems you think that you want help with out of the homework set. And that way, when I do the, when I go over the answers for you in the next uh, answer video, I'll just focus on those problems primarily. Um, hopefully that'll help us out uh, with the, being a little bit more economical with our time. Um, have a wonderful Wednesday and uh, I'll be, uh, be around at two o'clock this afternoon um, uh, for your, your questions on the previous homework on central tendency and spread, as well as the uh, any ratios and proportions problems you have from attempting this assignment. Um, maybe do uh, Jamboard again, maybe do uh, Google Meet uh, check um, you know, maybe about five minutes before two, um, and I'll post a link one way or the other um, for, uh, for tomorrow's help session. I uh, hope you guys are all doing well and not going too stir crazy. Uh, we'll see you soon.